Hello everyone. We're going to continue on with my Pixie JS tutorials and today we're going to talk about extending classes and using ES6 classes to extend the sprite class that is in Pixie JS. So we're going to start off with uh, my base project. Uh, if you've uh, been following along all this time, you'll recognize my base project as a simple app that is 800 by 600 with a little less like array background which you'll see here and it's added to a div. Uh, like so. So nothing really, nothing uh, too fancy to start off with. Uh, for today's tutorial, I have some sprites I picked up from the uh, game dev market, which I had gotten from Humble Bundle, and so this is the Pixie Character Collection Volume 1. So I'll, I'll use uh, some guys from there. Uh, so let's get started. So first things first is we are going to use our app loader to basically you know preload uh, two guys we're going to use. Uh, so two sprites. Well, I have a, a knight and a wolf. So first things first, we're going to create our variables for it. Okay, so we'll use these two guys to hold them once they're done. But now we'll create our app loader. So I put them both into my uh, sprites folder here. So I'll just simply just use this base URL so I don't have to add sprites each time. And so we're going to basically now add, put on this differently. You don't have to do this. This is basically a, uh, uh, for readability. So we'll load my knight first. And simply my knight.png. And then we'll load my wolf. Okay. That's those two guys. And then we're going to do an app.loader dot on complete and we're going to call done loading so we'll make a new function for for finishing up the work and then remember we have to do an app loader dot load in order to initiate the whole thing now remember you don't want the, the game loop to initialize in this uh, window on load because it's going to prematurely start doing things when th the loader has not completed yet so now we'll create our function for the done loading Okay, and then once we're done loading, we're going to basically do, uh, well, we'll make a function for creating monsters, right? So we'll create a monster, uh, monsters, because it'll be more than one. And then we'll put the, the game loop at the bottom. Okay, so, all right, just so recap what we did. We have our app loader that's going to load up two of our sprites. And then when it's completed, we're going to call this function. And then now we initiate the loader to load. And we create our monsters now. We'll have to make a function for that. Let's sit down here. Let's do that. So at least we'll have a stub available. Okay, let's do that first. Okay. So how are we going to define our class? So um, we're going to go up here and just define it up here. Uh, now, typically, you may want to have a separate JS file. But for simply, the sake of simplicity, I'm putting them all in here uh, just so that... Um, you know, it's just it's simpler. All right, so we're going to create a monster class, and it's going to extend, extends pixie.sprite, okay? And the way the syntax for an ES6 class works is it's sort of like, it's almost like a function if you look at it. Uh, but the one important part here is we have a constructor. Constructor. And we're going to pass in some parameters for what's going to make up uh, our monster class. So... We'll have an X, uh, Y, and then a texture, and then the name of our monster, and its hit points, and its speed. Let's start with that. Okay. Uh, and then we'll basically use a super to call into the parent. So super is going to basically uh, call the constructor of the sprite class that we're extending, and we're going to pass it as texture. All right. So in essence, what we're doing with this guy here is essentially what we're doing over here with this guy. With, with, uh, when we do a um, pixie sprite from and we pass in a texture, that's kind of what the super is doing. All right, the super is going to basically call our from and basically uh, pass that texture into it to essentially create our sprite. Okay. So then we, we have all the... the um, attributes and functions that are associated with the sprite and we can simply use our this 
to basically uh, work with it. So, um, you know, if you go back to my other program here, we, you know, we created the this girl here out of this texture. We set its anchor to 0.5, which is the center of our sprite, and we set the x and y positions uh, to a, you know, basically a value for on our stage, which was the center. All right. But you know, because we're doing a class here, we can just simply just do this dot anchor dot set, and it would do 0 0.5, just like we did there. And then we can do this dot name equals name, and this is going to be basically the name that's passed in here. So the this is, uh, oops, I made a mistake here. So the this is setting up uh, variables that are part of our class uh, for us to use. So HP equals HP, and then this dot X equals X, this dot Y equals Y. All right, and then this dot speed equals speed. All right, so what I've done now is, you know, all these guys that are passed in, I've used them in the super to create our sprite. And now I have uh, I tell I basically use the the anchor set that's part of the sprite class and set it to the, the middle, and then these are my variables that are part of my uh, my monster class. Okay, so these are the attributes of my monster class. Okay, so let's start off with a simple function uh, that you know aside from these these attributes, we nice to have functions, right? We'll call it, we'll make a function function called status status, right? And when it's called, we'll simply just return some data. We'll return this dot name plus has plus this dot HP hit points. Okay. So just to kind of report back how the hit points are. So it's real simple there. Okay. So now we have our base monster class. Okay. Now uh, one thing that uh, may you want to do if it's say for example there are no var variables passed in like say if no if someone forgot to pass x or forgot to pass a name or something uh you may want to have some default values and then you can actually simply do that by simply doing say like equals zero uh, equals zero so this is like after the texture the uh variable name you can basically uh, add some default data to it like name is uh say let's say name is none and HP is uh, default of 100, and speed is defaulted at 5. Okay, so you know you don't have to do this; it's optional. But it's just one of those things that uh, you can uh, define some presets uh, if if the data is not passed in. Now, obviously, you probably don't want to have that happen because you'll have a blank uh, sprite, so that's not not a good idea. But in essence, that's what we have. Okay, so now next. We want to go down and work with create monsters. So what is create monsters going to do? Well, we're going to create our, well, normally we would create our sprite here, right? So now what we're going to do is we're going to use the class. So let's say knight, all right, if I can spell that right, knight is equal to, we'll do a new monster. Okay, now we're going to pass in some variable. Let's just say x position of 100, 100 for y, and then um, texture, we're going to use the app.loader.resources. Uh, so, so and let's call the knight. Remember, this is what we did here. So, what that is, right? And I'm going to pass in this texture to the function, and then I'm going to call this guy knight, and we will have a hit points 200 and a speed of six. All right. So that's our that's our knight. So now we want to create a wolf. Let's call it wolf equals new monster. All right, and we'll just put this guy at 100 comma 500, and then we'll do an app dot loader dot resources resources, and this is the wolf, and it's texture, and then we'll pat and then we'll call this wolf, All right, followed by let's see, we'll make it uh, 100 hit points and speed to 10. All right, so there they are. So what's going to happen is it will create a new class of monster, which extends a sprite that uses this texture to create our sprite, and then loads it up with um, the the attributes that we wanted for our class. Okay. So then, uh, last thing we need to do is we need to do an app dot stage dot add child, and we'll add 
the night. Node app dot stage dot add child. And we'll add the wolf. Okay. So if I save this now and go back to my browser, uh, see nothing happens. What happened here? Oh, I goofed up. Uh, I forgot here. It's it's add or to add the onloading function. So I'll do that. Save this. Now should be better. And there we are. Okay. So now you see that we have our guys on here. Now if I put look the console up, night dot status. Let's see, it basically says Knight has 200 hit points. We're going to see that. Let's zoom up a little bit. So that's what it says. Now, even if I, in the console, if I hit Knight, you'll see that down here it says it's a monster. So just to, just from that, we know it's a monster. If I expand this, see there's all these things on here. And I didn't, I didn't write, write all this stuff. A lot of this stuff came from the sprite class. But the parts that I, that I put in here are these, name, HP, and speed. All right, so all these other things were all inherited from my Pixie Sprite, which is kind of cool. All right, so let's do um, let's do one more thing to it uh, to at least allow it to move around so that it, so that it looks so boring. So let's go and uh, minimize this, and we're gonna go and add something to this. So I'll add another function here. All right, so that's status. So we'll do a function here called move. All right. So you notice that doing, doing the classes here, I don't need to specify a function. Just doing this automatically assumes that it is a, is a function. So say this dot x equals this dot x plus this dot speed. All right. So we're basically using our own x coordinate and modifying it by the speed that was passed in. All right. So it's own, this own creature's speed. So then now all we got to do is determine uh, whether when we're moving it, whether we, we um, you know, go, don't go out of bounds. So we can simply just do this. We can say this dot x if it's greater than the app dot view dot width. All right, um, and then we're gonna subtract and we're gonna subtract this dot width divided by two. So we're gonna basically allow it to say that so long as the x isn't greater than the the, the viewport minus half the uh, sprite uh, width. All right. So this is kind of like you know allows to keep a bounds. Uh, and not have the sprite sort of go off the bounds before it bounces back. So we're going to do that. And also, we're going to simply uh, add. We're going to simplify this and say also if it's less than you know zero plus the width half the width of our sprite. So this dot x, if it's uh, less than this dot width divided by two, uh, then we can simply do this dot speed equals this uh, minus this dot speed. So we're just going to change direction. Okay, it's a real simple way of doing that. Okay, so save that. I'm not going to do anything yet. This is where our game loop comes in, right? So our game loop is set to run all the time. So in a game loop, you can simply just say uh, night dot move, and then wolf dot move. And now if we save this and go back to here, or not there, go back to here, we can see that our sprites are now moving around based upon the code here. So our game loop is running all the time. We've created our monsters, and that was it. So um, it's a way of simple, you know, once again, you see how, hopefully you can see how, how useful this is. Instead of having, say, a separate data structure for having all these um, in here, uh, in, in a you know, separate data structure for it, this is all here, and functions are within itself. So um, it's one of the things that just makes it a lot more encapsulated when you're creating your game, a little less code to wrangle. All right, so it simplifies the update, simplifies uh, creation and storage of all these um, you know, attributes. So if you find that useful, um, I'll probably extend this a little bit more you know, to show you some more things you can do with uh, the classes. But for now, uh, hopefully this will get you started on your game projects.